You're listening to the Smaller Supercharged Podcast with Rhea Freeman, episode 16. Well, hello there and welcome to today's podcast. Today we're going to talk about something I get asked about a lot and that is brand ambassadors. But we're going to talk about it today about how to pick somebody to be an ambassador for you and also from an ambassador's point of view, when you should say yes to being an ambassador and more importantly, when you should say no. Oh, this is a big one. So if you are not sure what I'm talking about, about being a brand ambassador, these are kind of, um, these are people, or the term has probably appeared more in the last, I'm going to say in the last three years maybe, but it has been around before then. So if you think about it, they used to be sponsored riders, particularly in equestrian sport and sport generally, actually. They used to be sponsored people. These would be individuals or teams that companies would either invest money in or product in and they would be sponsored in that way but then there came this kind of league of people who weren't necessarily the best of the best so often when you were looking at a sponsored individual you'd want them to be out there performing at a really high level and doing well at a really high level with therefore your brand being connected to a high performing person um, which made perfect sense. Let's be honest, if you want your brand to be connected to anybody, you want it to be a high-performing person. But the problem, well, not the problem, the, the thing that changed was social media. Because now we weren't, as a brand, we weren't looking for exposure whenever that person went out and competed. Actually, there was the ability to get more exposure all the time. And the thing is, as you'll know, if you follow any social media platform at all, you don't have to be um a, you know an olympic athlete to have a really good following actually some people who maybe don't even compete have got amazing followings and actually extending that further individuals who maybe they ride for pleasure maybe they don't ride at all thinking again of equestrian is fine if people don't ride or people who have lifestyle brands and blogs so they are they're basically making money from living their lives but they've still got incredible followings. And when you have an incredible engaged following, there is the opportunity as a brand, I'm moving around quite a lot today, to tap into that. If you have the right person who is is prepared to work with you, if you have somebody who's committed to really good content that's gonna work with their audience, and if you have somebody that will work with you. So this really changed the game. And it meant that now we weren't just looking at Um, people who were high performing in their sport we were looking at people who were high performing on social media which basically opened it up to the entire flipping world which was really good but also quite stressful if you are a PR marketing or social media person because you've gone from a fairly narrow pool where you are picking the people that align with all your values but you've got you know a few hundred to look at to essentially the whole world which isn't quite so easy but actually the more that the idea has developed the easier it's become to work out who is going to work with you or not work with your brand or not And there are loads of fingerprints all over when someone is going to work for you and when they aren't. And the more that people have developed the brand ambassador role, in my opinion, the clearer you can see this. So there are loads of things to look at when you are looking for people. And also from a um, a brand ambassador potential point of view, if you are that person who you're looking for, because the beauty of this system is it's two way. Before now you would get approached for sponsorship as a brand a lot. And I mean a lot, a lot. I used to, on behalf of clients, obviously receive so many emails, messages. I even had actual letters from people wanting sponsorship. And these were not strong letters. And they were, well, often they weren't strong letters. Often they showed no connection to the company. And the same rules apply nowadays but it's a quite it's quite a different proposition and actually if you understand what people are looking for and how you as an individual can benefit their brand you're much much better placed and you don't need to be 
jumping around badminton or running a marathon in order to be considered. So let's talk about from a brand point of view to start with. And this is useful, I think, for ambassadors as well, because you can see what kind of things brands are looking for. So if you are a brand and you are looking to work with people, I have to say the first thing I want to say here is you don't have to work with anybody, okay? People get into this habit of thinking they have to sponsor people, they have to work with brand ambassadors, they have to do this, they have to do that. You don't have to do anything you're not comfortable with. And I really believe that. I have seen in the in our um, Smaller Supercharge group before now, when people email me, they see sponsoring someone as a real kind of, a real goalpost, they have to do it. And if they don't do it, they're somehow a lesser business. Absolutely not. It is much more important to work with the correct people than it is to work with people. And if the correct people haven't come up yet, don't worry about it. It's you'll find the right people when the right time is right. Or if you put in or if you, you know, put in, I'm going to say effort. I don't mean that in a negative way. But if you make that a goal and you are looking to find somebody, you can put the time into it. But it is always much better to not work with anybody than to work with the wrong person. And I really believe that at my very core. So from a brand point of view, you are looking for people, influencers, we're going to call them, which I know a lot of influencers cringe at that, at that term, and I understand why, um, who are going to help spread the word about your brand in really simple terms but the other bit isn't quite so simple which is how do you find these people so there are a few things that I look for when I have my brand ambassador hat on or when people approach my brand about being an ambassador or if I am I'm always I've always got my eyes open I'm always looking for potential people because there are a lot of incredible people out there and there are a lot of people who have built followings really quickly really good engaged followings quickly and it's important that I try and be as aware of everyone as I possibly can. Of course, I'm not saying I achieve that because, you know, there's over a billion people on Instagram. There's two, what, 2.2 billion on Facebook. I'm not magic, but I do my best. So when you're looking at people you think you might like to work with, the first thing I need to say is that the numbers aren't everything. I have worked with people who have got a thousand following, a few thousand following, and they blow socks off people with huge followings. Their engagement's better. Their customers are more engaged. I know, for example, my following is, I'm going to go, it's 2,600. Because to be honest, out of all the Instagram accounts I admin, and I do admin quite a few, and I, God, I, um, I don't know what the combined following is, but it's, it's you know, we're, we're pushing, we're probably pushing 100,000. Um that, um, where's my train of thought gone, that I know that some of the things that I have featured on my feed, people have contacted me about and asked me questions about the product and they have bought the product in response to that, which wasn't the intention um, from my point of view, but it's a product I love. I talk about products I love because I think it's important. I know if I want to invest my money in something, I do a lot of research beforehand. And I'm really privileged that I get to work with some of the most amazing brands out there. But from a brand point of view, if you have somebody who has a few thousand following, but they really love your product, it features organically in their feed because they flip and love it. They've bought products from you. They wear the products. They love the products. They talk about the products, but they're featured in their day-to-day -day life. And also when people make a comment, they respond, they answer them, they engage with them, they try and help them on their journey, they're going to be a lot more valuable to you than someone who has got hundreds of thousands of followers who never replies to comments, who any um, inclusion of a brand or product feels forced and weird and it doesn't fit. So don't just look at the number under the person's name. Go through their posts, not all of them, we've got lives to lead, and look at actually what's going on in their post. Look at the quality of the images. Are they good? Can you see what they're talking about? Look at the caption. What does the caption say? How is it worded? How does it work? Obviously, you have 
to disclose if you're being paid for something. So if an ambassador is being paid, they should put hashtag ad or other wording, which people do need to look at, to be fair, or gifted, or there's various things that you can do. So don't be put off if they've put ad, that's a positive thing. It means they're being paid for it. So don't think, oh, well, they're being paid for it. I'm going to discount them. Don't do that. Look at, to me, that bit actually doesn't matter. It's important, I believe, as an ambassador or as a brand ambassador or as an influencer, you are 100% honest with your audience because if you're not, they're not going to trust you. And as a brand looking to work with people, working with people that no one trusts is a complete waste of time. So any kind of ad gifted hashtag is cool. That's good. But then look at the engagement. Look at the caption. What does the caption say? Look at, are people commenting? Do they actually care? Do Is the person responding? Is the product, especially if it's got ad or gifted, is it a good fit with the rest of their feed? Does it make sense? So have you got somebody who's very, um, you know, country, homely and lovely, but someone's paid them to put something on their feed that really jars and doesn't feel right? They're probably not going to be a great fit generally because the authentic following that they've built around the kind of homely vibes are probably not going to be that interested in the other thing. So look at the feed as a whole. How does it sit with you? How does it fit? Look at a number of posts, see what they're talking about. See the comments, see the interaction, see the engagement. Do people actually care about what these people are saying? Because if they don't, it doesn't matter. You, it, it's not actually going to get you any more exposure or it's not going to help to educate people about your brand and products. And I really, I'm so passionate about this. I would rather work with more people with a smaller following who get products than I would people with a big following who don't. So I really believe that wholeheartedly. And I've seen people with big followings do very, very little. And people with tiny followings work their backsides off. And the one that delivers the best results is usually surprising. So don't just look at the number underneath the name. Look at it all as a whole. Look at the engagement. And I want to also say this as, and this works with, um, not just on Instagram, but this also works on Facebook. You could have somebody with a really small following on Facebook. But when they post something, do people care? Do people comment? Do people engage with them? Look at this. Don't just look at the number. Look at the whole thing. It's really important because you can build followings of unengaged followers really quickly on any platform. People can pay money to build these followings. And basically, it's a complete ego thing. It means you've got loads of people that follow you, but no one who cares. And that is no use. It just serves your ego. And um, if people are, if brands are looking at ambassadors, potentials or people to work with, and they're only looking at that number, more for them. I don't find that number... That number is useful when it's authentic and genuine. That's the thing. But it's very easy to get an inflated number if you're willing to, you know, go to various websites and chuck money at it. It's not something I've ever done. It's not something I'd ever advise because I think it's wrong. I think if we are, if we're just putting out fake stats, then what the hell is the point in that? I mean, I'm just not interested. It's a, There's enough to, to look at and enough to deal with with people being genuine. So anyone that I even get a sniff that is, a, is fake is on the no pile. Different subject. So yeah, that's that point. So look at all their social media platforms, look at their engagement, look at the following, look at how they engage with that following, look at the reaction to posts, look at all of those things. Also, you want to look at their own owned platforms. So if they are a blogger, look at their blogs. Now, I wouldn't, there's a lot of, of people that say, oh, look at the comments. I've actually turned comments off on my blog because I got so many spam comments. It drove me to distraction, so I just turned them off. So I'm not, I mean, I think that comments can be a really positive gauge because you need to look at, at some measurable but I also think that if someone's got comments turned off, I wouldn't necessarily count that against them. I'd look at the quality of the content they're sharing. I'd also then look at what they're doing with that content. So if they've written an amazing blog, how are they distributing that? Are they putting it on their social platforms? How are they doing that? Are they doing it in a way that gets people really engaged or they're just shoving up the link and it's not getting any traction? So look at them as an overall picture from the kind of uh, 
an analysis point of view. But then take it a step further. So let's say they do quite well on that level, because if not, just, just discount them, move on. Now you need to look at them as a person and your brand. So think about your brand as a person. Would it be friends with that person? And that might sound crazy, but let's just, just work, work with me here. So if you have a brand who think about your customers, think about the products you make, think about your typical customer, your customer avatar, the person you want to appeal to and your, your brand. So think about all those aspects. So are they country? Are they horsey? Are they town based? Are they city based? Are they, do they, you know, have a really exciting social life? Do they like to spend time inside? All these little aspects, okay? And then keep those in mind when you look at the people that you are thinking of working with. Because if somebody is a complete contrast to your customer and your target market and your business, all those things in one big lump, you're probably not going to do that well unless you are specifically thinking of using them to get to a brand new market, which is also something people do do. So if you're looking to target equestrian country people and your brand as a kind of person would be very equestrian country, um, you know, quality, all this, and you are working with somebody who is a huge fan of cheap, cheerful things, lives in the city and doesn't like mud, they probably aren't going to work together. You need to have some comparisons there. So, for example, if you were looking to somebody for somebody who had more of a city-based following, personally, if I was a country in a question and brand, I'd be looking for people who spent time in the country. So I'd be looking for people who maybe went clay shooting or maybe they do ride, maybe their parents live in the country. So you've got that link there. So it's not like two different people are talking because you can spot it a mile off. There are some amazing people who are very, um, very city based. They've got jobs in the city, but they are at their heart a country person. That would work really well. But you need to do the research and you need to look at these people and really think, is this going to work? Because you're not, all, you're not just thinking about, is this going to work for my feed? You've got to think about whether it's going to work for their feed. Because before you approach them, if they're kind of worth working with, they will look at you and go, oh, hang on. I don't like any of those things. So my audience won't like any of those things or most of my audience won't. Therefore, it's not a good fit. So think about would these two people be friends? Would they go for a drink together? Would your brand as a person and this person actually want to be in each other's company? If they came to see you at a show, would people walk past and think, gosh, she looks lost or would it work? And this isn't negative towards the ambassador at all, because on the flip side, if you're a really high end city brand, you probably don't want somebody who spends all their time knee deep in mud being an ambassador for you because you, you don't have that many parallels. So potentially, again, you have to do research. So you need to make sure that all those bits work as well. So look at these people, look at their likes, look at their hobbies, look at their interests. Again, spend time studying their feed, their blog, their Facebook feed. All these things, look at this. Look at how they interact with people as well. Look at the terminology they use. If you have someone who Fs and blinds all the time and actually that's not particularly fitting for your brand, that's probably not a good idea. So look at all that in quite a lot of detail as well. So if you've got the, the following you're happy with, you're quite happy with sort of their identity I'm going to say so their likes and dislikes how they align with you you're on a pretty good basis to start thinking about them seriously and if this is the case I'd make sure you're following them on all platforms and I'd make sure you keep an eye on what they're doing because it's important you need to see what they're up to what they're doing how they operate how often they post and all the things that may help you in your decision about whether or not to work with them and then if, that's the, if you are happy with all of those things, you can approach them if you like. So that's sort of how I would pick them. I would also then want to, if they were interested, I'd want to, I'd always start really kind of calmly and maybe send them a gift um, and see what they do with that, but not put them under any pressure because I think it's much more interesting to see how people perform 
And actually, I find I get much better results with the right kind of people if I don't put any pressure on them. If I let them do what they like, they'll either do it and then I've got a really good ambassador on side or they won't and I haven't, to be honest. Um, because I think as an ambassador, they've got their own following, they're their own personal brand. And I think as a as a brand, you shouldn't be dictating to, you shouldn't have to dictate to people who are aware of everything that's going on exactly what you need from them I'm not saying you shouldn't chat to them I'm not saying you shouldn't float around ideas with them I'm not saying you shouldn't discuss ideas with them but I'm saying that you want them to be able to execute on those ideas and make it relevant for their following because they should know their following are much better than you do so that is that um I also think a really good indicator about whether someone's going to be a good ambassador for you is if they've ever bought from you before I like people who know the brands I'm talking about. I like people who I see the products on their feed before they even enter my eye line as somebody who could be ambassador material. I like people who genuinely love the products. I like people who rave about them when they've paid for them because to me, that's a really strong indicator too. Now, from an ambassador point of view, all the tips I've just given work. So you need to build a really good engaged following, which is what you'd want to do anyway if you're on any social media platform. Think outside the box. So you won't suit every brand and you don't want to suit every brand because why would you do that? There's lots of brands that conflict and you don't want to really be working with two brands that are in direct competition with each other because that that doesn't make either brand particularly happy. It feels strange and a bit icky And I think it gives quite mixed messages to an audience as well. So you want to be really careful who you pick because you want to do the best job you can for them. So you don't have to appeal to everybody, which is the good news, definitely. But if you do get approached by people who you don't feel are are a good fit for you, say no to working with them. And I mean this in the nicest way possible because it's lovely when you're approached to be a brand ambassador. It really is. But if you take on a brand ambassadorship with a brand that you don't really get, but you've just said yes because, you know, looks good, you will regret it. By saying yes to somebody, you're potentially saying no to someone else. Because if a brand had been looking at you and then you go off with a competitor, essentially, you will probably drop off their list quite quickly. I mean, you should do. Which is fine because you might be happy with that other brand. And that's lovely if you are, because they tick all your boxes. Also, you want to make sure they really align with your audience, because if you've built and nurtured this audience that have tapped into what they, what you like and dislike and what they like and dislike, and then you go and do something completely left field and random, they are going to wonder what the hell is going on. And that is not a place you want your audience to be. You don't want them questioning what you're doing and thinking, oh, yeah, she's been paid for that. Oh, she's just doing it because of free stuff. Tell them the truth, but you don't want them thinking that you as a that they're that they as a follower of yours are kind of being used as leverage for free stuff and even you know being paid when it's actually got no relevance to them at all. So you need to respect your audience because you spent so long building this up. You don't want to mess it up. I think from both sides as well, you want to make sure you actually like the person you're dealing with. So yes, you need to have a massive affinity with a brand. You need to love the brand. You need to really get the brand. Um, but you also want to make sure that the person that you deal with there, they get you. So they might be really busy people. And I'm not saying, you know, you don't want to email from every day, but that they offer you support each other. So you're there to help each other. It's got to be a partnership. And if you don't like the people that you're dealing with, partnerships can be very tricky. Um, I mean, they can be tricky when everything's going the right direction. So if you're not sure that that person is really working with you, they can be even, it can be even trickier. So make sure you've got that link there with that person. Obviously people do change, so that's not a kind of deal breaker, but it just makes life a lot easier. If you can have that to and that fro and you know that you can come to them with an idea And they'll consider it and you can potentially move on. That's really, really important. So if you are looking at brand ambassadors and they don't fit the criteria I rambled on about today, and if you are a potential brand ambassador 
and you are looking at a brand that doesn't fit, fit that criteria, I would really urge you to not jump into any, I'm going to call it a relationship, like that. Sit back and watch for a bit. You may lose out, you, that person may go elsewhere, but then they probably were never going to be your person anyway. I know that sounds a bit sort of depressing, but it's true. I really believe that if you, you know, what you kind of put out, you attract. And I, there was somebody who I was listening to a podcast and they say, when you say yes to one thing, you're saying no to others that you may not know about. And you want to make sure you're saying yes to the right things. So that is my advice on brand ambassadors. So it's kind of more of an intro really, because we can get really into the details, but what to look for in a brand ambassador and how to pick one or how to give you the best chance of success and also from a brand ambassador's point of view, how to make sure you've got the right company supporting you and when to say no and when you should say no to. I have to say on both of these things as well, I've got a real thing about gut feeling. You know when you something looks right on paper but you just have that really annoying niggle. If that happens, I would just sit it out for a little bit because I have to say whenever I've ignored that niggle, it's always kicked me in the backside really hard. So if you're not sure at all, I would just watch them for a bit longer before you approach them or something like that, just so you get a bit of a better idea. And it might be that your niggle goes away because you you weren't quite sure about something and that's, you know, worked itself out. Or it might be that you see the reason you had that niggle and you'll be really pleased for it. The good thing is there's so many opportunities out that you don't have to rush into anything. So just don't, just enjoy I'm going to love you and leave you for today. Thank you so, so much if you've joined me on this little solo podcast. Um, I hope all your plans are going well for the new year. There'll be loads of kind of things that we'll talk about this year anyway. But if you're, if one of them is to be to either work with brand ambassadors or to be a brand ambassador for more brands this year, hopefully this podcast will help you. I'm going to love you and leave you now. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll catch up next week. Have a good one.